On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. Out of years of darkness into the light, is this the moment Melbourne can finally break that long premiership drought? The wait ahead a couple of weeks, the moment to savour is now and Alex Neil Bullen from the Demons joins us on the lead on ABC Grandstand AFL. Alex, thanks for your time today. Hey guys, thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure. Firstly, take us into the rooms, even on the ground last night when that siren went and you knew that Melbourne was heading back to the last day of the season for the first time in 21 years. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. It's a, a feeling that none of us have had before and to, to be able to do that in the fashion that we did um, couldn't be prouder of the group and probably another best thing about the night was having the fans in the stands like the energy that that created there was a part of the last quarter there where because of the scoreboard we could take a moment and soak it in and they were doing the Mexican wave and that for us is you know that's why you, you play the great game is for the family the friends in the crowd and obviously some fans are back in Melbourne but we could feel the energy um from all the way over there. So, yeah, a very special night for all involved. It was so contrasting to when you were last in Perth for a preliminary final when Demon fans had their heads in their hands, as you say, throwing their hands in the air in, in party mode at the end of the game. Such was the dominance of the team. What do you think has been the most significant shift in this football club that has allowed you to be where you are now? Yeah, it's, it's something that has been built over many years. And, you know, you, you have experiences along the way and you're, as long as you're learning from them, whether that's a win, lose or draw, um, what you can take away from each year, um, you can improve on the next year. And I think that's what we've done. Yeah, the form in 2018, um, some could say we overperformed that year and the following year we had a very hard reality check um, of where we're at. And through those experiences, you gain people on the list, you lose people on the list. But as long as you keep a core group that drive your standards and drive your culture um, along with the coaches, the, the footy club is always going to be tracking in the right direction. And I feel like this year, We've all just moulded. We've played a good team brand of footy and we showed last night that that holds up in big games and it's a, it's a moment now that we've got to reset um, and look forward to in two weeks' time. There is mass hope now, Alex. It's 64 since you last won a flag, as everyone knows, and, and there have been years of difficulty. There have been heartbreaking losses. There have been tragedies with the, the loss of key figures within the club over the years as well. How, how heavy is the weight of, of hope that your supporters have placed upon you now? Yeah, it's because we're not in Melbourne right now, You probably we probably aren't aware of the impact that we're having directly. Um, I've had hundreds of messages from past players, uh, loyal members, player sponsors that have been through those hardships over the last 40 to 50 years. And you can just, you can sense the emotion within the text or within the voicemail. Um, it makes, as a player, very proud to be a part of a footy club that, has such a rich, rich history. Um, and as a young fella, you've always dreamt of playing in a successful side, but we've got an opportunity now that we can write our own history um, in two weeks' time. And that's something that, with the, the long time in between premierships, um, geez, I would do anything to be able to say that I was a part of the next Melbourne football, football team who won a flag. Alex, congratulations on the win um, and all the very best for two weeks' time. I mean, coming into the game, no doubt there's a strong belief in the group, but it's natural to have the, the nerves, a, a prelim final against another good team, all of that. I mean, how special was it to have your captain, your big ruckman, the, the, the main man, stand up and just perform to such an unbelievable level last night? Did that, did that calm the group down and just give you even more belief? Oh, Absolutely. The way he played inspired everyone around him. Um, it was, it was also, as long we all know in the air when the ball's in the air, Max is a huge chance to impact the game. But it was, for me, it was more the impact he had on the ground. The, and I, just through the commentary I listened to before in the intro, the way he attacked attacked the ball on the ground filtered through confidence to everyone else around him. So us smaller guys who that's our strength on the ground, seeing your skipper who's six foot eight, as he says, do that inspires you, and and everyone else just gains momentum from that. So the way he played um, was incredible. The only thing I'll say is I've heard he's been saying in commentary that he kicked that snuck from 50 metres. But I think your commentary just <laughs> aligned. It was only 40 metres there. <laughs> Don't worry, if you win the grand final, it'll be 60 in a couple of years. <laughs> That's right. 
Uh, Alex, tell us, uh, Stephen May, first of all, um, if you've got any news, or you probably don't, probably awaiting scans and all that, but if you do, please do let us know. But just when he gets injured, um, the conversations, the calmness with which the group handled that, were you aware that there was a little bit of doubt he'd hurt himself and that things were having to be shuffled or, or was it all pretty calm and controlled out there? Yeah, I saw a bandage on his leg, so you're always uh, interested to see what's going on there. But I had a good chat to him on the bench, I think midway through the third when he was subbed out. And because we are in a fortunate position, um, they just took no risk with him. A tight hammy, um, everyone who I've spoken to is confident that he'll be fine to go. Uh, and look, even, even if he went down like he did on the weekend, I think the growth of Harrison Teddy, um, I think it's important to highlight he's a 21-year-old who played on the most informed forward in the competition in Tommy Hall. And the role that he has, it, it enables everyone else around him in that back six to play their game and play it to their strength. So the, whatever happens with, with Maisie, um, we're, we're confident that he'll play and the people around him only will make his job easier as well. Alex, you win by 83 points, so everything goes right. But before the game, what were the key areas that you really wanted to attack um, Geelong with? Yeah, well, we obviously played them in round 23, so we had a fair idea of what their strengths are, and they obviously had a fair idea of what our strengths were. So our focus was our strength in our games, our contest. If we could win that, mm. we have every chance of uh, winning the game. And I feel like the boys in the middle from the get-go, it was probably 10 minutes out of the start of the game where it was a bit of a seesaw. Mm. Um, but from that moment, we, we hit the scoreboard and we took our opportunities. And I feel like the contest work from the boys inside was tremendous, and that set our game up. I think you look at, and Max will get the, um, the applause, Petrarca, Oliver. Jack Viney yesterday in the in the first half, was he was phenomenal. He, I know he's had his injury concerns, but the way he led from the front with his attack on the football, I thought really set you guys up. Yeah, seeing Jack, well, I've obviously been at the footy club now for seven years, so I know what Jack's, Jack's like. And people forget because he's been injured and in and out of the team through those injuries. People have forgotten how brutal he is at the contest. And I, I generally don't reckon there is a tougher footballer out there. The way he attacks the footy, it's almost similar to Maxi, but they lead in different ways. Uh, his, his attack on the footy, sometimes you, you're sitting on the outside of the contest and you just look at Jack and just think, he's going to get in there and get to work. And then that sets us up for our outside game. So the way Vines prepares, uh, the love for the club he has, he's obviously got the family history with it and he would do anything to make this footy club successful and uh, just a credit to him and his family. So the game finishes yesterday and you're probably back at the hotel I imagine by a 10.30 Perth time. Did you have a chance to sit together because you got a little bit of a break you know have a beer together have a meal together after the game just take a deep breath and go yep yeah, okay boys we're in a grand final but we've got a little bit of time now where we can take it all in. Yeah, no doubt. We we had a meal together last night back at the hotel and um, it was a time for everyone just to have a chat after the game, win, lose or draw. It's always nice to reflect. With uh, Another key thing is like no mobile phones. That's something that yeah we we really enjoy is when you've got everyone there, obviously straight after the game, everyone goes to their phones to contact the family who are back in Melbourne. But the special part about that is when you back, get back to the hotel, we're all there together. There's no mobile phones. Everyone's having a conversation, laughing about what happened throughout the game. And that's a very special moment in footy. And that's something I feel like once footy's all finished up for us, that'll be the times we reflect upon. And uh, for us now, it's, it's about doing what we did the two weeks prior. We've almost had a training run there where we had two weeks off after the first final. So we know what works. Um, now it's up to us as a footy club to commit to that and give us the best opportunity to prepare well for whoever we play in two weeks' time. We saw the emotion of Adam Tomlinson after the game on the ground. We saw the excitement of Nathan Jones uh, on the ground after the game. Obviously, Adam Tomlinson can't play, but Nathan Jones is available to play. How do you how do you keep them involved? How do you keep them? You can't go up to to them really and say, "Oh, you know, it's okay," can you? It's how do you how do you have that conversation with them still? Yeah, it's it's one of those things. You, when you when the siren goes and you see the 25 blokes run onto the field, like their their energy and their happiness, you know we're already ecstatic that we've we've won the the prelim final. But the the impact that they can have on the group without playing, um, I think they're aware of it. And the footy club, the leaders within the footy club, have made made a huge emphasis on for those guys to understand the impact that they can have, whether they've got the playing jumper on at the time or not. 
And I feel like, for example, Jonesy's attitude towards this whole last four weeks, um, it's been well documented what he's left behind in Melbourne with his wife, Jerry, and the two kids there now, and the two kids on the way. And the sacrifices that he has made inspires everyone around him. And it's something that whatever Jones, if Jonesy makes a decision within the next few days uh, to stay or to leave, uh, we will respect that. And Jonesy is the, the epitome of what we, we stand as a footy club. He's been here through the hard times, and now we're, we've got an opportunity to, to go all the way, and whether Jonesy's here with us in person or he's back in Melbourne with his family, we'll, we will respect that and um, understand the impact that he's had within this footy club. Yeah, my understanding is, Alex, that he has made that decision even today, I think, to, to fly back to be with his partner, Jerry, for the arrival of the Twins. Is that your understanding? Well, we haven't, no, we haven't had any formal announcement there, so... Uh, unless unless you've got some inside news, that's uh, that's news to me. <laughs> All right, that's good to get it from the inner sanctum, mate. That you haven't heard that yet, but um, that's certainly what's being reported uh, in yeah. Victoria at the moment that he was going to come home. So, and interestingly, last night when the emergencies were out on the ground having a run around after the game, Nathan wasn't one of those, um, the only of the the four who didn't. So, we'll keep an eye on on that, as we'll keep an eye on you and your fans are in Melbourne as well and right around the country. Alex, we're about to take a, a few phone calls from them and I, I can tell you uh, that the fans are, are so thrilled with what you've done so far and cannot wait for the next couple of weeks. So all the best with it. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate the support and hope you're all safe down there in Melbourne. Thank you, mate. Good on you. All the best. That's Alex Neil Bullen with us on the lead on ABC Grandstand.